For as long as modern computing has existed, the evolution of semiconductors has followed one sacred path, a path etched by the hands of physicists and engineers, constrained by the immutable laws of nature. Every generation of microchips, every microscopic breakthrough, has been a battle waged against the limits of physics. Each reduction in size, each leap in processing power, was not merely a technical achievement but a statement that human determination could bend even the hardest truths of the universe to its will. For decades we thought we understood the boundaries. We believed we were peering over the final ledge of possibility. The road was clear, if impossibly narrow. Three nanometers, then two, and eventually we whispered, maybe one. But what if one country didn't just whisper about it? What if they screamed it to the world? A claim, bold, staggering, almost unbelievable, has erupted out of China, shaking the core of the global tech order. A one nanometer chip, not in theory, not in a lab under perfect conditions, not in the distant future, but here, now, manufactured, real. If this is true, then we aren't just witnessing an advancement in technology. We are watching history split. This is a rupture, a shockwave through everything we thought we knew about computing, electronics, and the very structure of matter. It's a challenge to physics itself. A declaration that the so-called end of Moore's law might not be an end after all but the beginning of something far more radical. It raises a terrifying, electrifying question. Did China just break the unbreakable? For those outside the semiconductor world, one nanometer might sound like just another step in an ongoing race. But that couldn't be further from the truth. To understand how monumental this claim is, you need to grasp just how impossibly small that number really is. A single strand of human DNA is about 2.5 nanometers wide. At one nanometer, you are manipulating structures at the scale of individual atoms. There is no room for error, no buffer, no safety margin. At this level, electrons, the particles that carry electrical current, begin to misbehave. They tunnel through barriers they should not cross, slipping through gaps and bleeding out energy in unpredictable ways. The materials we've relied on for decades, primarily silicon, start to fail. The physics that powered the digital revolution for 50 years starts to unravel. Getting to one nanometer has long been viewed not as a step forward, but as a fundamental wall. A dead end. Not because engineers lacked the will, but because physics itself said no more. Crossing this line requires more than precision. It requires reinvention. It means finding new materials, creating new architectures, and fabricating chips in ways never before attempted. It means controlling the very arrangement of atoms with godlike precision. So when China's claim hit the airwaves, that they've developed and possibly even begun producing chips at the one nanometer level, the world didn't just blink. It gasped. Because currently, the most advanced chip makers on Earth, titans like TSMC in Taiwan and Samsung in South Korea, are only just beginning to mass produce three nanometer chips. Their next milestone, the highly anticipated two nanometer node, isn't expected until late 2025 or even 2026. These companies possess the most sophisticated technology humanity has ever created, yet they are still climbing the mountain. China now claims to have leaped over. So how? How could this be real? The semiconductor industry relies heavily on extreme ultraviolet lithography, EUV, to etch impossibly tiny patterns onto silicon wafers. These machines, developed almost exclusively by ASML in the Netherlands, are marvels of modern science. Each one costs over $150 million and is composed of tens of thousands of precision-engineered components. Without them, making chips below 7 nanometers is virtually impossible. And yet China has been locked out, held back by coordinated export controls designed to prevent access to this critical technology. The Western world believed this would halt China's progress for years, if not decades. And yet, here we are. Some theorize that Chinese engineers have found ways to push older DUV, deep ultraviolet, lithography to unthinkable limits, using intricate multi-patterning processes that require printing over the same spot again and again, to fake smaller features. It's technically possible, but it's like building a spacecraft out of wood. Not impossible, but absurdly complex, inefficient, and costly. Not something you'd expect to scale or commercialize. Unless, of course, they've done something more. Other whispers hint at breakthroughs in material science, abandoning silicon altogether. Perhaps China has developed alternative semiconductors or even ventured into experimental territory involving 2D materials like graphene or molybdenum disulfide. If so, then this isn't just about catching up to the West. It's about overtaking it, creating an entirely new lane in the tech race, one nobody else is even on yet. The implications of such a leap are staggering. This wouldn't be just a win in manufacturing. It would alter the geopolitical balance of power. It would send shockwaves through the defense industry, artificial intelligence, 
data infrastructure, and consumer electronics. It would mean the country that controls the most important technology of the 21st century is no longer following the rules. They're writing new ones. Of course, skepticism remains, and it should. Is this announcement real? Is it exaggerated? Is it strategically timed disinformation meant to rattle the global tech community? Could it be a proof of concept, not production ready? Without transparent verification, we don't yet know. But the mere existence of the claim changes everything. Because it forces the world to ask, are we standing at the edge of a new technological reality? Or the precipice of a massive deception? Either way, what comes next will define the next decade. Not just for engineers and CEOs, but for nations, economies, and the very fabric of the digital world. Maybe it's graphene. Maybe it's molybdenum disulfide. Maybe it's one of those exotic 2D materials most people haven't heard of, forged into unimaginably thin channels that somehow suppress the quantum chaos that usually tears electronics apart at such scales. Or maybe it's not materials at all. Maybe it's something else entirely, something unspoken, unpatented, and deliberately cloaked. A novel transistor design? A breakthrough in tunneling control? A quantum computing adjacent architecture that doesn't shrink transistors? It redefines them? At this point, anything is on the table. And that's exactly the problem. The announcement, or the whisper, more accurately, came wrapped in ambiguity. No peer-reviewed papers. No teardown photos. No chip samples. Just noise, speculation, and a headline too precise to ignore. A one nanometer chip. Not under development. Not in simulation. Supposedly real. Supposedly working. Supposedly Chinese. And the world took notice. Not because they believed it. But because they couldn't afford not to. Because if it's true, if it's even half true, it breaks the rules. Not just Moore's law, but the unspoken assumption that the frontier of advanced semiconductors still belongs, at least for now, to the West. To TSMC. To ASML. To the United States and its allies. A real one nanometer process node puts you not ahead of the curve. It lets you draw the curve. It would mean China no longer plays catch up. It leads. It dictates. And in the age of AI, autonomous systems, cyber warfare, and real-time global surveillance, whoever leads in chips doesn't just dominate markets, they shape the future. But there's no verification, no supply chain trail, no evidence from chip testers, benchmarking firms, or reverse engineering labs. Nothing in the usual channels. Nothing from ASML, who builds the EUV machines that make chips at these sizes possible. Nothing from ARM, Cadence, Synopsis, the invisible scaffolding of the semiconductor world. Silence. Which raises the question, is this a miracle of engineering or a masterpiece of theater? There are theories. Plausible ones. It could be a lab proof of concept, a single chip, cooled to perfection, operating in a vacuum, with power constraints so unrealistic it couldn't survive two seconds in a smartphone. It could be a definitional trick, one nanometer referring to a single feature, not the overall node. After all, node names today are marketing more than physics. Or it could be psychological warfare. Engineered ambiguity meant to trigger uncertainty, drive global headlines, and inject fear into rivals. A fog of war tactic. Classic strategic ambiguity. An old playbook, updated for the semiconductor age. Yet while the claim remains unconfirmed, the ambition behind it is not. China's semiconductor push is a machine with infinite fuel. Decades of investment. State-backed mega funds. Entire university departments redirected toward materials science, quantum computing, lithography. SMIC may not have EUV machines, but they've shipped 5 nanometer chips anyway. An extraordinary feat under sanctions. They've made serious progress at 14 nanometer, 12 nanometer, even working around key bottlenecks like photolithography by reinventing the process. Not elegant, but effective. Functional. Dangerous. This isn't about hitting one node. It's about control. About eliminating dependence. About building a vertically integrated domestic semiconductor empire that can never again be kneecapped by foreign policy. From EDA tools to fab equipment, from packaging to rare earths, China is laying pipe, brick by brick, for a future in which it doesn't just build chips, it owns the entire stack. If that day comes, sanctions lose their teeth, export bans stop mattering, and the last true lever of Western tech supremacy vanishes. Which brings us back to the original question. Is the one nanometer chip real? Maybe. Maybe not. But the message is, and it's loud, we are coming. Whether that's a bluff or a declaration depends on what comes next. The global semiconductor landscape is no longer an industry. It's a battleground. Chips are no longer components. They're weapons. And the race isn't just about speed or power or efficiency anymore. It's about sovereignty. Leverage. Survival. So what's your take? Is this the future arriving ahead of schedule or a calculated feint in a high-tech cold war? Is this physics being rewritten or perception being manipulated? 
In the world of semiconductors, fact, fiction, and strategy bleed together. The only certainty is this, the game has changed. Permanently.